What I'd like to do is give you a little bit of an overview of a website or program called GradeCam. I'm not affiliated with it in any way, but there's a number of people asking me how to do it. Uh, GradeCam basically is uh, like Scantron, but it uses the webcam on your laptop or if you have a, uh, some other sort of camera, maybe a, uh, an Elmo. What you can do is you can print out these answer sheets. Uh, they're free, they're reproducible and you can scan that in and do all sorts of analysis. One of the things I like about it is that you can have lots of different kinds of answer sheets. You can have letters, you can have numbers, uh, you can have uh, alternating rows of letters or numbers, you can have exam versions. There are also a number of nice reporting features uh, and item analysis giving you the breakdown by choice and uh, you can get each student's score that's actually stored online. You can change it, you can edit it, you can change the key afterwards. There's a lot of things I, I really like about it and there's a lot of different ways you can use it. But what I want to do in this video is explain a crash course of what you have to do if you actually want to uh, start doing this and using it in your classroom. First thing you have to do is you have to log in. Once you're in, you're going to go up here to Setup you're going to add a class. You can put the class name and the period. I've already done that. I'm going to use a class here called Mock Class. Now, you can update the individual students. Manually you can add them. It's actually a lot easier to import students. Uh, we use Infinite Campus. I'll have another video that will show you how to do that import process. But if you're just starting off now, you may want to just add a couple students. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to Assignments. So let's create an assignment. I'm just going to call this uh, Mock Exam 1. I'm going to make it 10 questions. And you'll come to this screen here. This will allow you to make any number of questions you want. I just made it 10. And you can manually click the choices like this to put in the key. Or what I actually prefer is to fill out uh, a sheet once we have printed that out and you can scan it in. Now if you want to print out a form, you can click this Forms button and you can actually have it pre-printed with the student ID numbers. Or my preference tends to be to actually use a blank form because I can just keep these things laying around and use them whenever the uh, occasion arises. Also worth noting you can uh, alter these forms so if you go to the forms tab at the top under advanced options this is where you can get multiple exams change it from letters to numbers make it bigger uh, etc but let's go back to assignments we'll do uh, mock exam here key and once I printed out one of those forms or in this case I'm going to use a student which we'll call perfect student I can hold it up to the webcam on my computer. Now the first time you're doing this in this box you'll probably see a button that says uh, something like webcam not installed. You can click on that and at least my experience has been you don't need administrative rights in order for it to work. I don't know why but it, it seems to work. Uh, I've not yet tried it with an Elmo but I believe it will work. So here I have uh, an answer sheet that uh, happens to be a student one or a mock student one. I'm going to hold it up like this. And it says, do you want to overwrite it? Because we did have some answers. I'm going to hit yes. That's now the, the key. Now, I have here some mock students. And I'm just going to click on scan. And what I found works best is to actually hold the papers in front, sitting on the ground. As you can see, it scanned it. And then I'm just going to pull them one by one. Putting on the ground makes it stable, a little easier to see. I can go like this. And uh, there. Now, something else worth seeing is you can do what's called student view. And the students can come in and they can basically do the same thing, but they only see their sheet they don't see the rest of the class so if you were to hold it up like this it scans it and it also tells you which ones you uh, missed student can then hit the space bar and it's clear for the next student now one of the things that's you know sort of fun is let's say I had a paper 
like this. This is Tom Brady. This is how it came in. You can actually open it up, flatten it out just a little bit, hold it in front, and it actually is going to, uh, to scan that. A little tidbit I found along the way is that sometimes it doesn't like to scan two of the same student in a row, so you have to alternate. And of course, every time it does that, it's just re-scanning it. Okay, so now that we've done all the scanning, what we can do is we can look at the results. So if I click on the summary, this is the overall results of your test. Uh, item analysis, I like. And you can see it gives you the breakdown, uh, not just of how many picked the right answer, but also how many picked each of the uh, existing choices which lets you know about the distractors. Uh, I found this certainly useful for tests but what I found more powerful is when students do homework the night before they can come in they can scan it and I can talk about the questions they've missed. So I can take 20 questions talk about the top three or four. Uh, I also like that uh, you can use this on the fly so I could decide in the middle of class I'm gonna ask you guys something I can hand out one of these blank forms students can fill it in and we can get that feedback right away so it's a really really powerful uh, toy well toys maybe a strong word uh, so here you can see it marks each students answer and whether it was right or wrong uh, standards I haven't messed around with too much I think it's just for state standards um, in terms of uh, the answer key, you can actually change that. Let me show you what I mean. So if we go back to the mock answer here, and I go back to the key, I can see, you know what, from the item analysis, I can see every single student got, let's say, question one wrong. If I change that key and hit next, it will then rescore all of the assignments based on that. So change it on the fly. That's, that's really powerful for those of you that, that aren't perfect. Now, getting on to, I don't know, maybe a little bit more advanced features. This is a big pile of exams. You can actually make what are called labels. So I'm just going to call this label 1. And what I can do now is if I have an exam, I can actually label it. Label it. So I check the box, assign label, label 1, and it puts this tag here. So now if I click label 1, all the assignments uh, with that tag will, will show up. It's sort of like folders, but not exactly the same. Something else I really like about the assignments is I can actually store the results. So I can click my mock exam, I can export to CSV, which is sort of like a, an Excel spreadsheet, uh, but it's not proprietary. You can open it up with Excel or any other program, and it's going to give you uh, the student names, the answers, and all of the results. Also, something I really like is the ability to archive. So I can take this, check it, uh, let's just say uh, this one here, and I can archive that. So it takes it off the screen. I can bring it back to life later. So in terms of ways that I've, I've used this and thought about using this is you can obviously um, use it for tests and quizzes, very powerful. You can do it with homework. One thing I've done with homeworks is sometimes I will actually give students the answers to every other odd one. Hold on, my daughter's calling for me. Sorry about that. Uh, with the homework, I'll actually fill out every other answer sometimes so that they have the answers to half of them already. Uh, you can use it for bell ringers when they walk in, have them answer it. You can do it for exit tickets on their way out. In the middle of class, you can come up with questions on the fly or pre-planned. It's basically a way of uh, formalizing an informal assessment. I like getting that data right away. One of the ways students have liked it the most is using it for what I call an answer checker. They can be working on a set of problems, and sometimes they just want to know if they got it right. So instead of hounding me to see if they got it right or wrong, or their classmates where they're not sure if they got it right or wrong, they can actually bring their paper up, scan it, and know right away which ones they got wrong and go back. So anytime you're doing a lot of drilling, uh, it really is powerful uh, feedback. We can also use it for surveys. It's a way to collect information. 
So it's a very flexible tool. Uh, it's very powerful. I, I rather like it. I've only been using it about uh, a month and a half. And uh, I hope that you find it as, as useful as, as I do.